transfiguration of Jesus because the transfiguration is the trust on their being, a way to inspire others to overcome their mendacity. In other words, for them to begin to turn to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, of course, is the wholeness of God energy, you see, that flows through all of us. And therefore, even me, we are the children of God. And therefore, we are all the recipients of the Holy Spirit. Because everywhere we turn, it comes to us from everybody around us. And we pass it on because that is the nature of the contiguous quality of soul, you see. There is no gap between you and me, so to speak, because soul is the history of humanity. So when we talk about humanity, we are talking about the completed story of our soul to date, you see. Our soul has many facets. It is one soul, but it has many facets. And each of those facets has a lead, you might say. It is like saying that the lead is the needle that pulls the thread, you see. And so each one of us is a needle that is pulling a thread behind us. Do you understand? And the threads are weaving together. And that is what people talk about, about the living tapestry of creation, you see. You've probably heard of people talking about the tapestry. And they sometimes will have this experience when they go to heaven or whatever. And they will say, I saw a tapestry. And I could see all the threads. Some were dark and thin. Some were fat and golden. And they were all working together to create this picture. And as I watched, I could see that the threads were moving through it to create a living tapestry. And that is the story of humanity. This team. I want to ask Michael about that word evangelical. What does that mean? I mean, I know that, you know, people have ideas about what words mean, but they have their own take on it. That makes sense. Straight from the heart, honey. Because he expressed it perfectly. Evangelical means that you are the angel in the heart of mankind because the angel in the heart of mankind expresses itself through the members of humanity, you see? And so the ability to say what's in your heart is the ability to enter into a communion with me because I'm the angel in your heart because this is the part I play today. I play the part of the angel in your heart. And so when you talk to me, Michael, and you say, hi, Michael, how are you? You talk to the one who connects you to God, you see? And that is the angelical part. So this is the way it works. The Eve part is that it is the angel in the children of Eve, you see. And so it is the evangelical that can express these things because the angel in the heart has to go through the children of Eve in order to reach the children of Eve, right? Good. And so when you speak what's in your heart, then you are allowing me to connect with you and help you to connect with the other children of Eve. 
and this is all there is to it. However, it is not true that you are to spread dogma. It is not true that you are to try to convince people that what other people say is true. You are only to speak from the heart of you. Because only when all the children of Eve can speak from their own heart will the angel in the heart be able to start to help them to be in paradise, you see. Because once you can let go of the old version of your life, you will enter into the new version. So this is the story of the caterpillar and the butterfly. The caterpillar will be the essential nature of the butterfly. However, it has to let go of its trust on crawling around on the ground or leaf in order to spread its wings and fly and get so high and so beautiful that God will smile and say, hey, I welcome you today to paradise because you spread joy wherever you go. And so the people who are afraid to let go of the ground, you see, ground level, and spread their wings and fly will never go through the cocoon stage. They will never go through the stage when they wrap themselves up in the dark, you see, and say, what am I? What am I? What am I? What's this all about? What am I? What's this all about? That is the stage of the transfiguration, the transformation. It is the transfiguration from the figure that could only crawl along the ground like the snake into the angelic form, you see. So as you continue to trust on your ability to trust on your heart, you see, you will know that even the co cocoon stage has to happen. It has to happen. So those people who emerge from the cocoon are the ones that you hear of who suddenly in the worst point of darkness in their life have a sudden realization and they awaken, you see, and it is a necessary stage. So, and you have spoken of the need for those who have left Christianity behind to find the new option, you see. So they're struggling to figure out how to transform themselves from the caterpillar into the butterfly. But some of them are afraid of the cocoon, you see. They're afraid to enter into the cocoon because it can be very dark in there. It can be very dark. He doesn't want to continue to be programmed by others, you see. And so he doesn't trust on anything. He doesn't trust on anything. And so he goes into the void, which is the lack of trust on dogma, you see. And you don't know what to believe anymore, because if you can't believe the stuff that they told you, then what can you believe? And it is in that stage you let go. You let go of all your programming, you see, and you enter into a state of complete apathy and disheartened ability to see any purpose in life. And then out of the darkness comes the light, you see. Because you have to let go of the caterpillar to be the butterfly. You have to let go of the caterpillar to be the butterfly. And so for these people, they will come to be a butterfly, you see. Because eventually they will go through the dark night of the soul. 
and they will come to see it was just a cocoon that held them tight. And it was so dark that they thought that they must be without any hope of ever finding the light. And then the cocoon breaks open and they see that they have changed their reality because now they can fly free, you see. So this is what happens to those people like Paul on the road to Damascus. They become the butterfly and they can fly free and they don't really care anymore how the caterpillars live because the caterpillars have their own life. So Paul says to the others, I don't care what you do because I'm not one of you. I'm free and I can live free as I choose to live free. And the caterpillars that are crawling around on the ground and under the rock say, well, if you come near us, we'll decapitate you, you see, because you're prettier than us. You're prettier than us. And we can't have pretty butterflies flying around because we don't trust on the process, you see. We don't cross trust on the process of growth. And this is the difference between humanity and the caterpillar, you see. The caterpillar trusts on its nature. It trusts that it must go into a cocoon where it will take a long snooze and say, well, I guess I'll never crawl along the ground again because I can't trust on it anymore. I can't trust on it anymore. I'll not be sitting there nibbling on a leaf because I can't trust on it anymore. I can't trust on it anymore. Woe is me, woe is me. And then the cocoon opens and out comes a butterfly and it licks its wings and says, hey, I'm free, I'm free. I have been transformed into a new version of reality. So, for those who go through this, it is the opportunity to help God, to help the rest of humanity to see that every one of us is a caterpillar until we lie away. And we will go through this process again and again and again until all of humanity understands the progression that they are ready to spread their wings and fly. And the analog to the caterpillar ends here because once all of humanity spreads their wings and can fly free, they will repopulate the world in a society of peace and harmony, you see. They won't have to crawl on the ground and say, oh, woe is me, oh, woe is me, oh, woe is me, because all I can do is stay here and drown, you see, until God plucks me up out of the sea and takes me to heaven, you see. And that is the story of the rapture, that they're crawling around the ground. And the only way they can fly free is for God to pluck them up into heaven, you see, and turn them into a butterfly but they can't trust on turning into a butterfly on earth, you see, because the butterfly on earth is the trust on the simplicity of nature, you see, that the nature of humanity is to grow into the reality of their shared trust on God, you see. They have to grow into their shared trust on God that God has it in hand, that God knows what he's doing. So, for example, you understand that over and over again, you see the synchronicity in this story. Over and over again, Steph will say to you, well, yeah, that was Thomas and da 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 and this was that, and look at this name. This name is very interesting, and this word is interesting. And it's not because she's trying to control reality. She trusts on God, and she just says, A, hey, I trust on God today that God has it in hand, so I'll just do what I do and say what I say. And then all of a sudden, she sees all the pretty butterflies. And she says, look at all those little butterflies. 
Look at this name. Look at this word. It all coordinates, you see, into a beautiful, beautiful world of color, sight, and sound. It all works together. It's not separate, you see. It's all together. And then she'll say, well, that was fun. Now I'm just going to do what I do and say what I say. And sometimes she'll just lay down and drift away and say, I don't need to worry about anything today because I'll be guided, you see. Mm -hmm. I will be guided. Because there's something in the heart of me that will speak to me and guide me, you see. So I don't have to worry about it. Why do I have to tell my heart how to start a different way? Why do I have to worry when I can trust on my heart? Because if my heart says, well, you're not real today, so you'll just have to go away, poof, you're gone then it must be reality. So far, my heart has never said that. So far, my heart has said, you are the beloved child that I have craved. You are the beloved child that wakes up every day and says, I wonder what will happen today. I wonder what will happen today. This is the best of the best. When the child is able to open its eyes and get a surprise every day. Then the father will say, wow, this child encourages me. This is the best child ever because this child never gets jaded, you see. This child never feels the despair that I feel in my heart when I look at the ones who don't remember me don't love me, don't care. This child runs into my arms and says, hey, daddy, look at the butterfly today. Hey, daddy, that was really fun. The trick you played on me when you told me that I should just trust you and you would do what you do. And then I saw the butterflies all around me. And I saw that this connects to this, and this connects to this, and this person was this person, and now it all makes sense. And I can listen to Jesus talk, and I don't have to worry about what he'll say, because I know it's okay. I know it's okay. I don't have to try to control reality. I can just let it be. And then the butterflies, you see, are the realization that it's all connected. It's all connected to me. That is, it's all connected to God energy. And therefore, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Now, I have talked a bit because I want Steph to take this bit and publish it. Mm -hmm. Just this part about the butterfly, okay? And we will continue to play with you, Jim, as long as you want to play with us, you see, and together we'll lift the rock and we'll expose the dark energy that tries to keep all the caterpillars convinced that they have to crawl along the ground until God fucks them up and takes them to heaven, you see, and then spits them out again and they'll become a caterpillar again, but they never become a butterfly on earth, you see, because they don't trust on the natural progression of reality. So they're missing out. They're missing out. Yes. That's the important thing for the people that hear this. You're missing out. If you can't trust on us, you see, to help you lift the rock on your own reality. You're missing out, and that's up to you. Because if you want to be the caterpillar that crawls along the ground and wait for God to pluck you up and take you to heaven, you see, where you can pretend to be a butterfly all you want and pretend that everything's okay. And then you'll have to come back to earth and be the caterpillar again and whine and cry and say, I got to wait for God to pluck me up into heaven again. Or you can be the butterfly on earth that flies back and forth to heaven, you see, because that is the way that it can be, is that you can be the butterfly that flits around in the forest, you see, 
or in the field, and you can fly to heaven. And there is no discrepancy, you see, because the butterfly is the connection between heaven and earth. Can you see this? The yeah. butterfly is the connection between heaven and earth. But you have to be willing to go through the cocoon stage, you see. And for those who, you who have been going through the cocoon stage and you're worried that you'll never get through it, trust on me. Trust on me that if you don't fret about it, you just say, well, I have to discard all the trust on those who tell me I had to be a caterpillar because I'm not a caterpillar anymore. I'm not a caterpillar anymore, but I have to wait for my wings to sprout. I have to wait for my wings to sprout. So I need to have faith, you see, that eventually the cocoon will break open and the light will shine on me. This is the meaning of faith, that you have faith in God, you see, and in the natural progression of reality. You have faith. When you are pregnant, that eventually there will be a child, you see? And that child has to grow in the darkness, you see? So this is another example of the transformation of reality. That soon there will be a child who smiles at you and says, Hey, I wonder what will happen today. I wonder what will happen today. And you say... Wow, aren't they going to be surprised when they see that puppy that I'm bringing home later on today? But they don't know about it yet. And they don't know why that all that puppy stuff is sitting there in the corner. They don't know. But when I bring the puppy home, they'll say, I get it today. I get it today. It was all prepared for me. And all I had to do was trust on daddy, you see. Because Daddy knew what he was doing. And I couldn't tell Daddy that he needed to throw all that stuff away because we didn't have a puppy today. And so if you trust on God, you see, God will show you the way. Okay. Wow, that was cool. And we say, good for you, honey, because every day is a new day. And we don't have to control God, you see. We don't have to tell God how it's going to be. We let God help us help God to restore sanity to humanity. Yeah. Are you following this? Yes, very much so. Okay. So the meek will inherit the earth. And that is what is happening. The ones who let God tell them through their heart what to do are the ones who will inherit the earth. The ones who want to tell God how God is supposed to do it are the ones who will be washed away. You see? Yes. They will be washed away. And so when somebody came on one of the videos that was public and said, this sounds like a false Christ in response to Jesus's response to your questions, Steph, took the time to respond to her because she's entitled to an answer. You see, she's not to be ignored. We're not here to ignore people and say, oh, you're just stupid today, so we don't want to play with you. We just give them the chance. We give them a chance to enter into a dialogue. And if they choose not to, if they go away, that's okay. However, Paige took the time to answer because she understands that you have to Reach out to these people so that they can reach back if they want to. If they choose not to, that's okay. If you stop and say, hey, we're not a fake boat here ready to pick you up out of the sea. We're a real boat. And you can trust on us. If you get in the boat, we'll take you to safety. And they say, okay, I guess maybe I'll give it a chance. Or in most cases, they will say, well, I think you're an apparition. You must be the devil trying to fool me to think that if I get in the boat, you'll save me. You'll probably eat me for supper or something. Then you'll just stay in the water and drown. Right? 
Right. And so if what Jesus said convinces somebody that it is the devil talking, because what would a false Christ be but the devil, right? Right. Then they are afraid of not being afraid to listen and to open their hearts to reality, right? That's right. And so they have, they're trying to tell God what to do. They're trying to tell Jesus who he is. And Steph doesn't say, well, when Jesus comes to talk to me, I have to trust that this is the real Jesus, as if there was a real Jesus that everybody has to see the same. She just says, well, thank you. This makes sense to me. I don't really care who you are, but you're a good friend to me. You're a good friend. I don't care if you're called Fred or Jesus. I like the fact that we can share. You can share your story. You can tell me how bad it makes you feel when people say you were married to Mary Magdalene. You can be my friend. And I'll be your friend. And we don't have to worry about how other people see you. When you have a good friend, do you care how other people see them? No. <laughs> no, you love them the way they are. And you say, well, they can just go away because they don't know you like I do. They don't know you like I do. They heard all the rumors about you. They heard that you wore your shoes on your head, whatever. They don't know you like I do. And therefore, I'm your true friend and I will be crucified with you if that's what it takes. Because I'm not worried about the people that are afraid to turn into a butterfly. We can be butterflies, and if they decapitate us, that's not going to change the fact that we have been able to fly, you see. And they're still crawling around on the ground. And so the butterflies will go away, and they will return another day, and they will say, hey, we're still here. We're still butterflies, and we're still trying to convince you that you can fly. He does. And somehow it's all going to work out. Somehow all the pieces will fall into place. And uh, anything, last thoughts on that, Michael? Yes. All of creation is a trust on keeping the faith. And even if humans lost their trust on their ability to remain in the present physical reality, and they had to be retrained, you might say, through a different reality. And I'm using the analogy of retrained as in the train you discussed, Jim. And they had to get on the train and get off at different stops in order to go through the steps of reintegrating their understanding of reality, then it will happen. It just is kind of sad to see that people would be willing to start all over again and not move forward from where we are. So we're in kind of a bottleneck, you might say. And the bottleneck is where you are. Jim and Stephanie and me, because we're working to help humanity to make it through the darkness into the new reality. So you might say that in a way, it is the story of the caterpillar and the butterfly expanded, and that we're in the Preparation for the cocoon that will carry humanity into the aftermath of the earth destruction, you see. And so what we're trying to help you do is create that cocoon. So when we talk about the community, you might change the language and say the cocoon. We're trying to create a cocoon. It won't be an unpleasant thing for you so much. It'll just be a place where you will 
be safe from the weather you see, and you will be able to grow into a butterfly. So as the community emerges from the cocoon, they will be the inspiration of the nation, new nation, that will reintegrate heaven and earth, you see. Do you understand how this flows? And so the cocoon that we are working on with you in order to get people to agree to enter into the cocoon in order to survive and reproduce through the coming years is the ability to trust on God's plan, you see. That God has a plan in place to change the face of the earth because the people that did not grow that trust on just staying at ground level and being caterpillars will be taken away so they can no longer destroy the cocoons, you see. They can't destroy the cocoons. They can't destroy the butterflies. And that's just the way it has to be. It's the natural progression of reality. They'll come back, of course. They are eternal souls, so they will not be lost. However, the fate of humanity rests on the shoulders of those who don't care because they already know that God has it in hand. They don't have to try to control God. Those who are trying to control God will be the ones who are lost, you see. But they will be found by God. And God will say, well, if you have to start over again as an amoeba, that's what you have to do, honey. But it's just the way it is. And they will say, okay, and they'll become an amoeba and they won't even think about it, you see? Because an amoeba doesn't have much to do. Except eat and reproduce, you see. That is its nature. And then gradually, they, God will allow them to be return to a higher state of complexity. And so we're at a very high state of complexity with the human vibration, you see. It's very complex, very complex. Each human being is a country into itself in terms of their physical reality. And so we have to make the next step. And where do you go from here? Where do you go from here? Where do you go from the failure to grow. If you fail to grow, then you will never know the next step you see. And so you just go back and do it again, do it again. And you could go through this for eternity where you just go back and grow through it again. You see, because that amoeba is a reality. It's a reality. And the cat that you pet is a reality, the reality. And it has a certain perspective, you see, but it does not have the capacity of the complexity of the human inspiration that allows it to express itself in the beauty that pleases God, you see. The beauty that pleases God is the ability of humanity to be so creative and to express itself in so many different ways, whether it's art or music or mathematics or science or just cooking for the family. It pleases God, you see. Thank you for listening. If you appreciate this content, please like and subscribe. Thank you.